welcome welcome guys please do leave a, leave a like a subscribe a comment a share whatever you think is best so i realize i'll run through that last video really quickly and it might be a very long video so what i might do is break the sections up diff um, into well break the video up into smaller sections and go into more detail for each one so here we are again we're back at p1 comparing the principles of web design I've chosen my websites and I've just, again, it doesn't need to be very detailed because this is just P1. So this is the least, the bare minimum requirement that you need to do. My website choices were Amazon and eBay. Amazon website link, I've put it there. What kind of website is it? So this is going to be your introduction, right? Typically you can combine. Uh, so that's why on the thumbnail you see intro and purpose. You can combine the introduction to this section to the purpose of the website. And I believe this is what I've done down here. So I've put my screenshot in for Amazon. I have a screenshot of the desktop homepage, which is this you can see on the left. And on the right, I have a screenshot of the mobile homepage. So I went on the website on two different things, my laptop and my mobile phone, just to show the screenshot there. This is also going to be good for later on when we come to speak about consistency, because as you can clearly see, it's obviously the same website. Not only does it have the same logo, the search bar is the same, the colors are the same, the images that show up on the website are the same as well. So that's gonna be good for consistency. I have the eBay part here, which I'm gonna actually take out in a second, but let me just go down to the Amazon part. So ignore this part for now. I'm just gonna go down to the Amazon part. And what I might do is actually just do one section, one website each, and then you can just mimic exactly that process for the second website to so whatever you choose for your second website so what i've said here is in this section i will detail the purpose of the website i've chosen i'm just going to jump straight into it the, now these are the bullet points or the points that you need to speak about i've highlighted them put them in bold to say you remove this from your document so if you're following my document and you want to use my headings that's fine but just remove this information when you are finished okay so these are the things you should ideally speak about. Again, I got this list from somewhere else. Uh, it's, it's a content-based website, meaning it uses web 2.0 technologies, products and or service-based and etc. So whatever your website is about. So here's a general thing I did for my Amazon. So Amazon's purpose, right? Amazon is an e-commerce website which allows users to purchase goods and services. They offer competitive prices compared to, <clears throat> to that of the traditional high street shops and services are normally attached to the purchased item. For example, they sell insurance for a mobile phone that you have bought from their website. Um, Amazon uses Web 2.0 technology. What is Web 2.0? This is something that you're, you're going to have to research. So I'm not going to put a link here for this one. So when you speak about something that's not common knowledge, you should ideally reference it. You shouldn't reference obvious words like, let's say, website, purchase goods. However, when you Ideally, what you want to do is be able to hand this, what I tell my students all the time, be able to hand this over to someone who has not much knowledge or no knowledge on the topic you're speaking about and for them to be able to go and find that knowledge or find that information relatively easily. So if I hand this to an English teacher who isn't very well versed in IT stuff or computing stuff, right? Because I've used the term in a sentence, they can understand what they've read. But if they want more knowledge on what is Web 2.0 technology, you give them a link, you give them a reference so that they can go and find that information themselves, right? Now, you for, for this coursework, you can just drop the link in here, follow what your teacher says. Because what I've done, I've shown, I've showed two methods, right? This is how I do, this is how I prefer my references being done. But if people do it like this as well, it's okay for, for coursework like this, for 60 unit coursework, that it's, it's fine. Right, so let's go back up. Amazon uses Web 2.0 technology. So if you're going to say that, say what Web 2.0 technology is. So that's why I said, what is Web 2.0 technology? And reference it as well. If you, again, you need to reference what you speak about. Uh, Google the purpose of Amazon. Uh, rephrase it and reference it. So what I tell my students again, whatever you find on the internet, never just copy and paste it unless you're, um, you're quoting someone's words exactly. So ideally, you want to read it, read it, uh, understand it and rewrite it. This is what I say to every single student. And then obviously you reference it as well. Reference it. So read it, understand it, rewrite it, and then you reference it. So let me get rid of this. Well, I'll leave it in for now. Google the purpose of Amazon. So here is Amazon's mission statement. So let me click on this link. It's going to come up on my screen one second. Let me drag this over. 
Now, this is just some random website I found that has Amazon's mission statement on there. You can go and find it on Amazon yourselves, but I'm being lazy here. So this is what Amazon says that they will do. Looking at that image, they have selection that's very, very true. I can't remember the last time I went into a computer store to buy anything because Amazon has such a wide range that would, that it would take me hours and hours, days and days to go into every computer shop to look at all the range of stuff that they have. So selection is definitely true. Uh, price, price is very true as well. I haven't been into a Curry's to buy even a memory stick in years. The last one I bought last week, I bought from Amazon because it was cheaper and they had exactly what I wanted. Convenient. Yes, I can check all the Amazon stuff from my phone, from my bed without having to leave my house, right? So this is very true. The point I was trying to make is that even though you might think you have a decent description or a definition of what the purpose of this company's website is, guess who has a much better description of what this company's website is? The actual company. So Google, Bing, Ping, whatever web search you use, Google... Amazon, uh, what did I Google here? Uh, what is the purpose of Amazon? I think is what I searched. So I did, what is the purpose of Amazon? If you're using Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, JD Sport, Google, what is the purpose of that thing, right? And typically, the website itself or the company itself will have some information on why they have that website, why they have this service, okay? So don't just assume you know best. The company will definitely know better than you about their own thing. Um, I already had that. Yep. Now, I've shown here, maybe show an example of the categories on the Amazon website or some items from a particular category. Not necessary. This is just me saying I, I like reading reports with images, right? So this whole thing here is going to be about half a page when you expand on everything, when you reference everything, when, when you flush this out and fill this out with text. I just like seeing images because it gives me, the reader, an idea of what is this person speaking about, right? Images help with that. Uh, it, it does help convey um, a message of what you're speaking about. Not necessary again. So that's what I would do for the purpose of the website. And again, I will only focus on the Amazon one for now. And then you guys can mimic what's been done for Amazon for what, well, for whatever your two websites are. The next section, I believe, is going to be target audience. So I'll go in again and try and detail as much as possible. Quick note, you can use the BTEC Level 3 IT book. It does have a lot of theory information there on Unit 6. The practical stuff is probably outdated at this point, but the theoretical stuff is still there. It's still very good. And you can reference it. So when you're speaking about things that you're not sure what this thing is or what that thing is, use that book to reference it.